Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRanker.com here, and today I've got a complete review of the new Fitbit Charge 5, as well as nine new things to know about this unit. Now, I've been using it for a while, so I've got a pretty good idea of where it works well and where it's where there's some significant trade-offs to be made, some trade-offs I have not seen in a decade plus of reviewing watches and devices. So definitely stick to this entire video where I dive into all those nuances. Now, before we talk about those nine new things, let's talk about the price. It's 179 US dollars. Uh, that does include six months subscription to the Fitbit Premium service. Uh, that basically gets you more advanced data uh, and some of the recommendations bits. Now, only one feature I'm gonna talk about today requires Fitbit Premium, but of course you may want it for other things. Now, after that six month free trial, it's 10 bucks a month or 80 bucks a year. So with pricing out of the way, let's talk new features. And the first one is the most obvious one, which is the new AMOLED display. Uh, now you can see it right there, it is super bright. Fitbit says it's two times brighter and it shows. Uh, and unlike in the past, you can actually see this thing outdoors in the full sun. It's sunny right now outside. I just finished running and it looks beautiful outside in the sun. I am finally super happy with the charge display while doing a workout outside. Now it is a touchscreen display, which means you'll use your finger to swipe through it. Uh, this is the main dashboard. I can tap this dashboard and change the metrics along the bottom there and on the side. So 10,400 some odd steps, my heart rate at 88 and I keep tapping it, and you can see there is 2,600 calories so far, and this bar, of course, increases on the left-hand side. Now, you'll notice the screen gets dimmer when I stop touching it, and that's because it's in the always-on mode right now, so it's saving battery in between my taps. Uh, to go ahead, and I just simply tap it again, and it wakes back up again. And again, you can iterate through these metrics. Those are my active zone minutes right there, 90 uh, steps, again, heart rate, and then I can swipe up uh, to get into kind of my dashboard of the day. So you can see 10,000 steps, 6.46 miles, uh, 90 active zone minutes, there is my hour of activity for this current hour, uh, and then my current heart rate. My sleep last night was not so hot, not so strong. Uh, my sleep score right below it, 68 fair. That seems optimistic. It was a pretty miserable night, but I'll sure fit it. Um, there's my SpO2 reading for the night. Uh, my exercise of the days, the number of the week, so two out of five days this week. Uh, and that's the bottom of that list. I can go back up the top here, and then I can swipe to the right, and here's my notifications. So you can see there's a text from my wife. Uh, I can go again. There's the exercise. So this is where I would start an exercise. Um, I can swipe through the different exercise modes. Uh, you get up to six modes on the watch itself, and you can customize or change these modes slightly. Uh, you can't change the display metrics within them, but you can display if there's an auto lap, for example. And then once I were to tap a mode like this, uh, it would then go ahead and connect to GPS, either using my phone or using the built-in GPS. And we got to talk about that. For realsies, don't skip this part of that video. It is super important later on. Now back on the touchscreen, there are a couple options. Uh, first off, by default, it is not in the always on configuration. Uh, what that means is that each time I put my wrist like this, the screen will actually fully turn off and then I raise my wrist and it turns back on again. And to Fitbit's credit, this is the best Fitbit I have tested yet in terms of the gesture recognition, the fact that when I raise it up like this, it goes to full brightness or turns on. Uh, now, if you want to turn it on to the always on mode uh, for 24 seven usage, you can do that. Within that, you even have the option to turn it off overnight, uh, and you can configure that, whether it's from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., like the defaults, or something else. Now, of course, if you turn on the always-on display, that's gonna burn your battery quite a bit more. Uh, there's also three more options as well for brightness levels of the display, whether you're always on or otherwise, as well as how long the display stays on before it goes back to either dim or completely off. Lastly, in terms of usability uh, while it's wet, it's actually not that bad. Uh, I've been pleasantly surprised by this. Uh, so usability, like while I'm running, sweaty, all that kind of stuff, no problems at all. Uh, it doesn't generally false positive trip in the shower uh, for my testing, though there is a water lock option that you can enable uh, if you're having problems with that. Okay, now before we get to the next one, this is a good time to point out, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, please go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there. It really does help out this channel and the video quite a bit. Now the next one is similar to the first one, but it's different. And it's actually probably my favorite feature in terms of functionality, which is the always on display for just workouts. In my case, the majority of my testing time, uh, I kept the defaults, which means the display is off uh, when my wrist is down and then turns on my wrist raises up. Uh, but for workouts, I like the display on the entire time and the Charge 5 introduces the always on display for workouts. Uh, now, like before, it'll burn more battery, uh, but it means it's always there, uh, even when you just kind of glance at it at an off angle without having to raise your wrist fully. If you were to enable this for workouts, then after the workout, it'll go back to your normal display settings for the remainder of the day. Next, there's a the new EDA sensor, electrical dermal activity sensor. Uh, this is something that Fitbit introduced on the Versa 3 and the Sense about a year ago, and now we're seeing moving down to the 
charge five. Essentially, the way this works is that you sit down, get yourself comfortable, uh, and you go swipe into the menus over to the right hand side until you get to the EDA sensor. You keep on swiping and swiping, and there we go. Uh, and then you tap it to start, and then you hold on to both sides of it. Uh, oops, start, and you hold on to both sides of it, and then sit here for three minutes doing nothing. At the end of the three minutes, it'll ask you how you felt, how calm you are, uh, and then from there, it'll show your heart rate progress over that time frame. Now, behind the scenes, it's tracking more than just your heart rate. Uh, it's actually tracking three different metrics, and those metrics only show up in the Fitbit app, so you have to see them there. Uh, and then you can trend and plot those over time to see how you're feeling. Ultimately, this is tracking stress. Next is the new daily readiness score. Now, unfortunately, this feature isn't available yet. Fitbit says it's, quote, coming soon, but they refuse to define whether or not that's like a December soon or like a next week soon. Uh, typically speaking for Fitbit, soon means like probably November-ish or so, but we'll have to see there. Uh, so I'm gonna explain how it works, and then once this feature is released, I'll come back and do a whole video on just that. Essentially, though, the daily readiness score is based on how ready you are to tackle the day from a workout standpoint. Uh, and it's based on three things. One is your activity levels relative to your norm. Two, your sleep, but weighted within the last three nights, so it's establishing a bit of a trend there. Uh, and then three, your HRV score, your heart rate variability score. It takes all those things together and gives you a readiness score for the day. The higher the score, the more ready you are. The lower the score, the more ready you are to recover. From there, it'll give you a recommended workout for the day uh, that'll change based on intensity and duration based on that score. Uh, and if the score is low enough, meaning sucky enough, uh, then it'll give you some kind of more passive recovery type stuff to do, maybe stretching, yoga, et cetera, to try to get your body back in shape for the next day. Now, this sounds roughly familiar to what Whoop does with the recovery score or what Garmin does with their body battery score. Uh, so I'm interested in digging into it a bit more deeply to see how it works. The one caveat though is with Fitbit, this feature does require a subscription, and that is true of both the daily readiness score as well as the workout suggestions. Okay, next we got an easy one, a non-technical one, uh, which is the band and the thinness. So the thinness of the Charge 5 is 10% thinner than the Charge 4, and it certainly feels a little bit thinner as well. Uh, but more importantly than that is that the band that comes with, the stock band, the band that you get uh, for free in the box, uh, that one doesn't suck. Uh, on the Charge 4, I hated this band. It wasn't as flexible as I wanted it to be. I found it often caught my arm hair in there. Uh, I'm really liking the new band on the Charge 5, so kudos for Fitbit for just putting a good band on there to begin with. Now next, we've got another feature that is not yet here today, which is the ECG feature. This is something that Fitbit rolled out a year ago on the Fitbit Sense, uh, and is now on the Charge 5 as well. Well, soonish. Uh, Fitbit says that's, again, coming soon, uh, but it should work the same way as the Fitbit Sense, which means that essentially you go ahead and you hold uh, both sides of it for a given time period, uh, probably 15 to 30 seconds, and then from there it produces an ECG plot. Based on that plot, it'll attempt to detect uh, AFib, and then from there it'll give you a PDF export that you can give to your doctor. Now, as I mentioned, that feature is not yet available on the Charge 5 today. It is, quote, coming soon, uh, but I would expect that to work exactly the same as it does on the Sense uh, because of how regulated this particular feature is. Next, another easy one, which is that they've added high and low heart rate notifications outside of a workout. Uh, so that means you can set in the Fitbit app a low heart rate notification and a high heart rate notification. Uh, by default, those are set in the mid 40s, I believe, and at 120. Uh, when you get beyond that, outside of a workout, so potentially just wandering along, then in that case, you've got a notification on your wrist that you are at a high or low heart rate. Next is the battery life. Uh, in the case of the older Charge 4, uh, Fitbit said that was about four to five days. In the case of the Charge 5, they say it's up to seven days of battery life. Eh, um, no, I don't think so. I don't see how that's possible. Uh, now, granted, I've been doing actual workouts outdoors, so that reduces that battery life a little bit. Uh, but I would say I'm probably going to be trending more towards like four to five days without a workout uh, than seven days. But perhaps it's possible down the road as they optimize this a little bit more. Uh, either way, it's still not that bad uh, to charge it essentially twice a week. And with that, we get to the last one, which is that Fitbit has pretty significantly changed the GPS design on this watch compared to the Charge 4. It does have GPS built into it, uh, and that impacts directly heart rate accuracy. And it also impacts GPS accuracy. And in my testing, quite dramatically. And ultimately, the long and the short of it is that you get to choose. You get to choose whether or not you want to have accurate or any GPS at all, or you want to have accurate heart rate. There is almost no middle ground in there. So when I first started testing the Charge 5, I had some problems with GPS. Namely, 
it was horrific. It was both horrifically slow to find GPS and then horrifically bad when it finally got GPS. Uh, and I went back to Fitbit and I said, hey, what's, what's up with this? And we had conference calls and all sorts of things. And they said, I was wearing it too tight. Now I was wearing it like any other GPS watch out there. I've been doing this for over a decade now. Uh, I'm pretty good at like wearing watches. It's not too tough. But they said I needed to be able to put my finger fully underneath the sensor like this, have enough space to do that. Uh, now, of course, the problem with that is that when you have a loose band like this, uh, that means the optical heart rate sensor will struggle to have accurate results. Uh, and indeed, that was the case. So nonetheless, I took that recommendation. I went outside, I loosened it up, I went for a run, and sure, I had no problems finding GPS again. However, my heart rate was useless. In some cases, 50 beats per minute off. I mean, way, way off. Like not even in the in the same realm of off um, that I can possibly imagine. Uh, so I said, well, that's not going to work. So I went back to them and said, hey, what's the dealio? And I said, try other band settings. And so I went out for a run a couple of nights ago, and I iterated this entire run alternating different strap settings. So basically tightening it one notch at a time, trying to find just the right spot where I can maintain GPS uh, and also maintain heart rate accuracy. Uh, and I couldn't do that. There was one position on the second notch right there that allowed me to basically like slide my finger under here, but not under the middle part. Uh, and that allowed me to get decent GPS uh, and okay heart rate as long as I had no intensity with it. Uh, but the second I started in adding intensity or a sprint, I would lose heart rate. So I went back to them again. We had another call. They said to try the sport band instead because that might be a bit more flexible and allow just a little bit more uh, room for the GPS. And this is probably the most important part here is that the way this band works, uh, the GPS GPS is below the actual display, which isn't that unusual. It's the antenna that matters. And the antenna is part of the case, which is also pretty normal. Uh, but in this case, it sounds like portions of the antenna are also most importantly along this bottom edge right there. Uh, so as I pull this into my wrist like this to tighten up a strap and have it be what I would consider a normal uh, level of tightness, uh, you actually lose GPS. And there's no better way to show that than my run today. A very simple run, not too complex. And for the first seven minutes, I start off with the recommended finger ping, I guess, um, where the finger could fit under there. It was loose like they wanted it, um, but I got GPS. And for the first seven minutes, GPS was spot on, no problems in the forest whatsoever. Uh, but my heart rate lost the plot, as you can see right here. So then for the next four or five minutes, uh, I tightened it one notch on the sport band. And in that case, GPS continued to be just fine, uh, but heart rate was completely lost as well. So then I said, fine, I'm gonna go one more notch again. Uh, and then from there on out, my heart rate was absolutely beautiful and the GPS was gone forever. For the rest of the run, there was no GPS whatsoever. Even though the watch at times told me it had GPS, it didn't. It didn't have any GPS. You can see on the map right here, it ended in the middle of forest. That's where my body is found uh, next to the canal, probably in the water, who knows what. Uh, but that's the end of the run. Now, before we go any further, you should know that after a week and a half of all the issues I'm about to describe, Fitbit sent out another unit in a Hail Mary. But here I am on this run, and I can tell you, unquestionably, it's just as bad as the first one. Uh, it's been miles since I've had GPS, and uh, looking just like the first unit was. So out here in this giant clearing and no GPS. Literally can't get GPS out here in the middle of a massive empty space. And it's even loosened down to the second to last notch showing that once you lose GPS, it's all over for the whole run. So ultimately, I don't know how to like reconcile those two. There's no other watch on the market that requires you to have a completely loose flopping around device in order to have functional GPS. Uh, and there's no other company, even Fitbit included, that would say that's acceptable for any of their other devices. That's just not the way devices work. Now, for some folks, that trade-off won't matter. If you want to use your phone, for example, with the Charge 5 for GPS, you can do that. Uh, in that case, you just tighten this thing up. Your heart rate will be largely just fine. Use your phone for GPS and life will be good. You'll have to take your phone with you, but that's a trade-off you've made. Now, I don't know whether or not Fitbit could fix this in firmware updates, though I strongly doubt it, at least for the GPS side. That's something that sounds like a very, very hardware-focused thing in the way they designed the antenna on the case itself. Uh, on the heart rate side, it's plausible, but that's going to be incredibly difficult to be able to overcome the gap that's required for the GPS to work uh, to be able to get good heart rate signal there, uh, especially on any high intensity sort of stuff. So with that, that's all I've got. If you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.